Hello. What up, guys? Welcome back. We, Thank you, guys. We for missed being you here. so we much. Missing you. We say that every week, but we mean it. Yeah, we mean it's it. because we do. We get like six days in, and I'm like, ah, oh, man, I gotta go talk to my peeps and <laughs> get on the thing. Yeah, itching to do another episode. Yeah. Well, before we get into this episode, um, if you guys are looking for, you know, maybe a new light or, you know, maybe a rosin press or something like that, we just partnered up with a couple weeks ago about. Um, with Grow Sponsor, which we got connected with Medic Grow, Photon Tech, and Magobe. Photon Tech and Medic Grow use code SMOKE to get yourself 10% off some lights. Also, Medic um, Grow's doing a sale right now, too. They right? are, but by the time oh, this episode right. airs, the sale will be over. But um, So, patrons, exactly. there's a sale going on <laughs> right now if you take advantage you can do it. Yes. <laughs> um, and uh, Magob does rosin presses and trim trays. So smoke press for uh, 10% off a rosin press and 10% uh, off a rosin, tr- or not a rosin tray, a trim tray for smoke trim. Um, all those will be down in the description. So if it, we didn't make a lot trim. of sense, uh, <laughs> they're down there. But um, yeah, and if you want more content like this and want to support us further, uh, patreon.com slash smoking with. Also, you get these episodes early. Yep. That's why we're shouting to the Patreon. Also, Absolutely. shout to uh, Sugar Free Gardens for hooking us up with all that, oh, with Grow yeah, Sponsor dude, and all that, dude. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, and, but yeah, anyway, we are, we smoking have a guest today. Pod, um, all other stuff. Oh, yeah, you guys know where to yeah. find us. Um, but yeah, we are smoking with today. We have a guest, um, and we have today with us Mr. Wolf Grows. Hello, dude. What's up? What's up, guys? How's it going? Oh, it's Great, dude. Fantastic. It's an honor to finally have you on the show. Yes, we, yeah, it's been a while. You know, I feel like a long time ago, a long, long time ago, uh, I think before we even had Shifty on the first time, we were talking back and forth on Instagram about coming on. And uh, just, you know, life got really busy and shit happens. happens. Shit happens, dude. But we're, uh, we're here and we're putting it all together. Um, yeah. So, you know, we'll, we'll roll into introducing uh, Mr. Wolf here in a second. But Mr. Wolf uh, is our collaborator on an upcoming project we have coming going. Yeah. on right now called the grower's dilemma if you guys are curious about what that's all about uh find us either of us on social media and we have all the channels in our bio and stuff but in youtube yeah. you could find us growing with productions uh where we'll be rolling all that out and uh some super secret stuff some coming super your way. secret stuff but yeah, <laughs> this, yeah. <laughs> but it's gonna be dope honestly it's it's really exciting to start to collaborate with you know other people in the industry that have a good head on their shoulders and a ton of knowledge and wisdom that we don't particularly have. It's not that, you know, we don't know this stuff, but just anytime you can get another grower who's passionate about something like you are and you can bounce ideas back and forth, it creates something, I mean, in my opinion, great. And I, I'm excited to share it with you guys. And I know Garrett's excited and, you know, Mr. Wolf is excited and, you know, you guys <laughs> are going to check this out and, It'll be mainly video, you know, we'll, we'll drop it on the pod too, but you know, there's going to be a lot of visual aid or not a lot, but there's going to be some visual aid stuff plus our beautiful faces. So, you know, you're probably going to check it on the YouTubes. Um, yeah. But Mr. Wolf, who are you and how did you happen into cannabis, my guy? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, who am I? I? Well, I'm Nick. Uh, you can call me Mr. Wolf or Nick Wolf. It, either way it works. Uh, but I used to be a chef um, for quite some time. Uh, Ever since, I mean, I was a cook for longer and I was a chef for a shorter amount of time, but I was, uh, I've been cooking or I was cooking professionally for over 15 years, um, which a lot of people look at me and they say, man, you look pretty young for doing that for 15 years. And I say, I am. And I, I started early. My dad had a catering company, so I was, uh, kind of, um, what, not, yeah, it was, it's like slave labor, just <laughs> no. kind of thrown into yeah. it without getting paid for or anything. No. Yeah. Um, and, and uh, but had to do that every summer and, and on weekends and stuff ever since I was 10 years old. So that was kind of my intro to the culinary scene. And then I moved on from there, uh, went to college for a little bit and found out that that college was just not for me. Uh, uh, then I moved back home and just tried to figure out life and, and eventually said that I needed to continue with something that I already knew, which was culinary. So I went to culinary school, met my wife actually, and then, uh, had been cooking ever since all the way up till 2020 when COVID hit, uh, at which point, um, 
I was going to go start a new job. I was helping open a new restaurant in Portland, Oregon. Damn. Um, I was going to be one of their executive sous chefs. Uh, it was going to be a really dope spot. <laughs> but COVID slowed all that down. And by the time that they were ready to start opening again, I had completely transitioned careers, which is why we're talking here today. So oh, yeah. at, at that point, I, I didn't know what to do. Like a lot of people would not know what to do, I feel like, when you've been doing something for over a decade and, yeah. and are kind of like at the top of your game. Like I was killing it. I was making food that like people like would have Michelin easily... star level. I, I had never been at a at a Michelin star place, but we had uh, like multiple mentions in news magazines and stuff. My wife and I opened a restaurant in Portland, Maine, and uh, we had been featured on a, a couple different news outlets and our our food was in the best Portland eatery book for like 2017 or something. And yeah. so we, we've definitely had our accolades in the food and culinary world. But then, um, you know, like I was saying, I, I just I couldn't see myself wanting to stay in an industry with constant uh, and varied human contact. So uh, I don't mind like interacting with people. I, I am kind of an introvert, but uh, that's why I was a chef. I, I didn't have to deal with as many people. That was like the front of house. They could they could talk to those people and chat them up all they wanted. But I just wanted to make sure that their tummies were happy. Um, oh, yeah. So I uh, I decided that cannabis was the way to go. I had always loved cannabis. I uh, like I I'd been smoking since I was eighteen. I didn't really smoke it all through high school. My dad used it a lot for pain and for depression and stuff uh and he had his medical card in california so w it was never really like a big deal to me it was just kind of there i'd seen him grown a few plants here and there um but uh i i just once i was 18 and i like started to use it for my own medicinal purposes and just to like you know rec recreate with other people that were of like minds and mm -hmm. it, it helped expand my mind a lot more to being more calm and at peace with the world i was so angry when i was younger Perfect. um so i'm i'm definitely like grateful to it in so many ways and so i decided well why not give that a try it's it's legal now i don't have to face jail time uh at a local level in any way uh by by cultivating in a professional sense for a, a licensed company so I'm, I'm gonna dive in so i dove in um it took me like man it must have took me like six months of just looking for a place to hire me because uh, I don't know if if in Washington if you need like a cultivator's license but in Oregon uh, you have to have a cultivator's license so that takes like a that's three to four months process where you're waiting for this license to show up in the mail um, at which point you'll have your actual like number that you can then apply to jobs with because you, you need that in order for your employer to hire you. There was a brief period where you didn't need it at the beginning of COVID because they were so backed up, but I, I don't think that that's the same anymore. And so I think that it's just back to like, you, you need that to enter. So there's a barrier to entry just right there for, yeah. for any you know Joe Blow that wants to go get a job in the cannabis industry. It's not that easy. And there are people that cut corners, but it's not that, not that great uh, to do that. It, you can face some pretty harsh penalties still even if it's legal now yeah. i know that that you need like a <laughs> license to do like bud tending and stuff too right so are those yes. different than cultivation are they separate or yeah. are they all the same like oregon state uh it's all the same it's just an olcc oregon cannabis and oregon liquor and cannabis commission right um it's like a just a cannabis service permit so you can uh that's so crazy cultivate uh you know, you can work as a bud tender. You can just anything um, industry related. Yeah, you can transport it. You have to have it to transport it even. So you can't just be a random transportation company that says I want to do this. Now you have to get all of your employees it's crazy. Uh, licensed to do that. So and it's not that expensive. It's only hundred bucks, but it's just a hassle, and it takes it. It takes time. So then you yeah. have to have lead time on that. But that's it's just. But the I, so company's I did that. license and, too, right? The company has yeah. that. You the company has to have a license, and all of your employees have to have a license. That's so. Well, cool. and you you can't even like apply for a, a new license in Oregon. You have to purchase old licenses now. Yeah. There's still a moratorium on it. Like they won't even issue new ones still. But you. So, anyways, like I, I was waiting to to get this license and just like starting to look around at places, like kind of like prodding, like 
reaching out here and there, but not hearing anything back. And it was only because I was like, I was just used to the culinary industry and I would used like um, all sorts of uh, different hiring sites and, and like recruiting uh, websites for uh, the culinary industry that when I decided to go into cannabis, there's nothing for that. The, like, so the only place that I could find was, um, it's like a, a cannabis, uh, it's almost like a recruitment firm where they like hire you and then they hire you out to farms hmm. and hmm. they would charge the farm for your time there. But then I found out just like through due diligence that if through their contract, if you decide to work at that farm, then you would have to have that farm pay a severance fee if they wanted to hire you on full time, no longer through that uh, oh, wow. agency. Wow, that's yeah, that's some shite, that's some shiesty <laughs> shit. So shiesty shit, right? Yeah, they're like, oh yeah, we'll it's get you people in the industry. No worries. Shit. It's just capitalist bullshit. It's just straight up like, give me my money. <laughs> Let me try to make fee, as much money as possible. But finders fee, but not even <laughs> but for humans. Like no, I human know. finders fee. What the. Yeah. And then they're probably paying you bottom dollar because you're new in the industry, right? So it's oh, like they're $12 paying you an hour the lowest sure. that they can yeah. pay you. They're charging the company probably three or four dollars more on top of that per hour. And yep. then and they put the insurance, like if they wanted to do insurance or benefits, they put that on the company that oh. is that you're working for. So they don't even they pay like basically you are an employee of that company they just have to pay this firm ex wow that's bro it's shady. sharecropping it's sharecropping with extra steps that's brutal what the yeah fuck? that's like the whoever did that used to be in the mafia i swear because that's some fucking <laughs> mafia i, I don't really shit. get it like i totally understand <laughs> that they're just trying to make money in this new industry but i, yeah. I didn't agree with it so i didn't go with their company that's um, good dude i'm glad that we didn't go into a horror story of you having to escape no. this fucking weed mafia to <laughs> work at the place you're working now <laughs> no i mean like i i definitely was able to not do I, I i avoided that found the first place i worked at and definitely gained some experience there but like this whole time i've been I, I was growing at home so i like started mm -hmm. a tent at home then i started another tent at home then i started like learning how to clone at home then i started like i just started to try to learn everything that I could like even on a small scale basis just to have a little bit of hands-on experience um, because like with culinary what I used to do is I, I used to make small plates like I, I would but I would take you know two days to come up with a concept for one plate and so I, I but then I would have to pump out you know 50 of those in 20 minutes Damn. so scaling is something that I was really used to. So I'm not really, I wasn't really worried about being able to scale a skill as long as the tools were there in, in order to scale it. It, it. it then just becomes repetition, practice, and, and, and then perfection. No, that's, so, that's exactly true, dude. We have two people who work for our, our company who come from the culinary world and like they they're both like yeah this is easy translation it's basically you know you just do this but you just it's now involving cannabis so yep. you saying you're coming from the culinary area is just like that makes a whole lot of sense yeah if you're repeating the same thing over and over again um it can translate my, my first boss asked if i knew how to make precise cuts when taking clones and i was like i can shop like 10 heads of lettuce without looking at it into a chiffonade yeah i'm good <laughs> And yeah. they didn't understand With a machete. what that meant. So, yeah, they're like, oh, oh okay. And they're I'm like, like I, that, yeah. that went way over your head, didn't bud. But that's all good. You pull out your chef knife and just like three <laughs> I'm, I'm taking clones, clones with like a chef knife. Off of it. Yeah. No, no, I didn't, like, I didn't, didn't go that hard. I was still like, I'm a newbie. I want to learn the correct way. Right. Yeah. No, I don't want to like sure. try and show you know, up readjust an old skill to something yeah. that may not be as translatable right <laughs> man that would be dope though I, if and i I'm walked sure. into a farm and somebody was like chef knifing clones off of the fucking thing <laughs> I would, so i have seen yeah. someone using a vegetable knife for clones like the ones that you see in um like in supermarkets oh, or okay. like produce stores where mm -hmm. they come through and they'll like trim the ends of stuff on the daily to make sure it doesn't look bad mm -hmm. those are razor sharp so i've seen people like taking things are clones and you know you do one little nice saw motion with it and you can stick it right in your cloning solution and have like 20 of them cut at once as long as you line up all the apical node so it's just like gets production down super quick wow 
that I'm, I kind of want to try that now. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, mean, I commend you yes. on the culinary in Portland because I talk a lot about like how dope the food is in Portland and how crazy comp like competitive it is to even be a chef in Portland right now because of how many good chefs are in the area. So like, I know you're saying, oh yeah, I'm not that much of a chef but guys like if he's chefing in portland he's on like at least the bottom of a, like the next level right so well so like i i don't mean to toot my own horn too much but oh, i toot it i found I the hear. the chefs in portland to not be necessarily up to the standard that i was used to because mm. i came from napa valley uh i was a chef in napa valley first and foremost after mm. my culinary <laughs> school and that's uh like in terms of where you're going to find great chefs one of probably three places in the united states where you're gonna find the best of the best nice fuck yeah dude well toot toot hell toot. yeah dude this mother <laughs> uh, now we gotta when we go down there we're not going out to eat sir i hope you know that you just booked yourself i don't go out to eat chefing us something up because now the, i want to know <laughs> the only places i go out to eat are fast food because it's consistent and i know exactly what it's going to taste like i don't i don't trust other people to really like cook me food anymore <laughs> wow <laughs> yes i like the confidence we're definitely yeah we're going fuck yeah <clears throat> okay so, so you, you you got a ton of experience in the culinary and obviously you're you're at least you know some sort of well decorated if you're chefing it up in these you know high highfalutin places but what is your cannabis experience what how long have you been doing that um i don't think we got actual numbers on that when we were talking about it just a second ago but how long have you been doing it commercially and then how long have you been doing it like in your own uh sure so commercially um let's see it's 2022 now so i've been doing it commercially for just over two years um like started mid 2020 uh 21 oh i guess actually just under two years so um commercially just under two years and then uh at home i've been doing it for uh, like in earnest, I guess just over two years. Mm -hmm. Uh, nice. but I, you know, I used to grow like a plant here and there back in the day when I was growing up in the Bay area and stuff. So, nice. uh, like the, my first experience with it is pretty funny. My, my old buddy, Andy, uh, his mom was super chill and, and she would, uh, like, I, I don't know if she smoked or if she would, no, it was our, our other friend would smoke and she was interested in the plants, so he gave her some seeds, and she w grew one in her window and was so excited about it that she let her son, Andy, grow a bunch in the backyard, but just in, like, little tiny terracotta pots because she just thought they looked cool. And so me and my buddy Andy were like, well, fuck, dude, we need to, like, grow this and get something from it. Okay. So we transported it back and forth between our houses because he could have it on the week and I could have it on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So we were driving this plant that was flowering all summer, oh, no. uh, or, or like into the end of summer, and then I had to go back to college, and I was going to Sacramento State, so I drove these fucking flowering cannabis plants with me out to Sacramento State, and I was like, just come when they're done, and you can take half, and then they, like, I, I brought them to my apartment, and uh, I had a friend that was going to put him out in his backyard and he flaked on me. So I had to like try and flower him in my like apartment room just with the light from the window. Oh, no. But I had to like only leave it open while I was home so that I could like watch if anyone was going to walk by and if it was going to be someone sketchy. So it, nothing really happened from it. You know, I think I like microwaved some of the flowers that I took off of it <laughs> as like that old school like quick cure uh -huh. like i'm gonna get no. a quick smoke off of it i think i remember getting baked from it but i i also <laughs> was at college at that point and just dabbling in other things so i'm sure that it was just some stupid college uh thought process that led me to think man i'm still gonna smoke this right yeah fuck dude that's crazy that's, yeah. it, it's insane for for only doing it for you know two to two and a half years now you have quite a bit of knowledge, and um, you know these people listening right now may may not know that because we haven't dug too far into it. But this man's a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. What, what do you just have a drive for for knowledge, or you know I know that maybe you said that your boss has uh, <clears throat> you know sent you to these what do you call them? Um, it was crop steering. Yeah, um, yeah, like talks. Well, so like I, I, I went 
and the, my so my thought process behind it was that I um I put so much time and effort into the culinary industry. I was my wife and I were like actually in the process of acquiring investors for a restaurant that we were going to open that was going to be part of a restaurant group that we were going to start in the Portland metropolitan area. We had it all planned out. We just needed money. Um, we were ready. And so my mindset going into the culinary industry was I want to own a business still. I need I so I'm not going to go into this and just go, well, I'm, I'm just going to learn on the job because that's not going to work. That's not going to be enough information. Uh, mm -hmm. So I read as much as I could. I literally probably spent because that I, was, I had that whole six months where I, I made the conscious decision. This is what I was going to try to transition into, but I didn't have a job. Mm -hmm. So I um, and, and, and at this point, my wife and I had actually moved back home with my parents because we were both transitioning out of the culinary industry. She's going back to school. Uh, so we were both like, hey, like this gives us an opportunity to transition. Can you guys support us while we make this transition? And they were like, oh, absolutely. We, we can help you out with that. Okay. So that was a blessing. Yeah. She's um, no parents. Yeah, so that we were able to come here and just put that time and effort into what we were transitioning into. And I just read books. Uh, I quickly found out that there's not a great cannabis grow book out there. Uh, like no. if you buy a book to learn how to grow cannabis, you're going down the wrong path already. You need to start looking at online websites, forums, like the the one that really got me into like the actual individual parts of like all the intricacies within the growth cycle of cannabis and all the different things like IPM nutrient regimens, lighting, uh, environment was I love growing or not I love growing marijuana but uh, growweedeasy.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It just has so, like such a wealth of knowledge of experience and not just uh, from say someone who's been growing for like 20 years or something. It was like people who were constantly trying to uh, transition into the newest, uh, most efficient technologies. And when I was like, well, I'm, I'm trying to get into the um, commercial space, I, I need to know what the newest, most relevant and economical technologies and practices for growing are because that's going to be what is going to be used. And I was right. Uh, so all of the stuff that I researched was immediately applicable when I got my first job. And I, I, I felt as though I posed a threat to the manager there because he knew that this was my first cannabis job, but I was asking him questions that he didn't have answers to. And I was also informing the other employees of stuff that he didn't have the information to give yeah. them. So it was... Uh, a very short stay there for me. He eventually like wrote me up for something very silly. Like he, he said like, don't worry, I, I'm going to turn a blind eye to you guys. If you're going to like smoke in your car on lunch or something. And then literally like walked up to my car at lunch and was like, Hey, you're smoking. I need to write you up. I'm like, you, this you is a fucking trap. Said, yeah. Wow. That's a trap. Yeah, dude. Fucking so, nice ass was out manager. The next day. If I, you're I, listening I, to this I, dog, that was greasy. You owe this yeah, man an need... apology. <laughs> It's all good. I, I mean, he, he transitioned out of the like actual cannabis industry into something that was far more corporate anyway. So I already knew the mentality of someone like that, that was not really looking for like yeah. a holistic, uh, approach because even though this is like a, a drug, like it's mm -hmm. a narcotic, it's going to alter your state of mind, just like most painkillers are narcotics. Mm -hmm. So like it, but it's so much healthier and it, it provides so many other benefits for people in such a vast array of, of, of spectrum of, of like ailments that can benefit from cannabis. Like whether it be even a perceived ailment, you can placebo affect yourself with a good smoke and, and you're going to feel better. So there's just, it just felt as though, uh, you know, dealing with people that weren't necessarily in that mindset was something that I needed to get out of and, also, mm -hmm. I wanted to provide the best cannabis possible. I mean, I smoke a lot of weed yeah. and I don't want to smoke something. I don't want to produce something that I wouldn't smoke. So like I worked at a place that had powdery mildew issues and they couldn't get it under control and they wouldn't listen to any advice. So I had to leave there too. It was just, you know, there's that. And then of course there's a lot of old school ways within this industry where I don't know if you have dealt with it at all, but like one of my bosses, like, 
you know, he'd, he'd drink all day and then, you know, halfway through the day, switch over to Coke and just start like, you know, blowing rails and, and, and getting in the zone, I guess, as, as he would say. And it just Damn. It didn't help. It, it literally made <laughs> it so like everything that we might have progressed on that day in, in terms of like them listening to some sort of reasoning as to why uh, a certain IPM regiment might work better than just being reactive to when a problem was occurring. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This that makes so much sense. I really like your energy. And then the next day, them just not even remembering the conversation like right. at all. Wow. So it was. I was like, okay, no more of this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I eventually found where I'm at currently, and it seems like a good spot to stay for for quite some time. My my current employer is a chemical engineer. His father is like a, a diesel engineer, and uh, the, they both work hands on with like all of our equipment and all of our nutrient cycles or like our just everything is so well dialed in that I have so many kind of useful tools at my disposal that it makes growing so much easier and it it helps us really sort of push towards those like crop steering principles and other uh, horticultural management practices that really increase yield exponentially yeah hell yeah that's dope dude i'm glad you found found a place that matches your passion right matches your like thirst for knowledge it also sounds like they like hustle too and i think you know coming from an industry where you actually have to work hard like culinary you step into the weed world and yeah, there's a lot of people who do work hard and there's a lot of people who can hustle, but there's also a lot of people who don't. Um, and you kind of have to sort through the shit to find a good place that kind of like marries with that. Cause yeah, like I've been to dispensaries where like people are high on the job, right. And you can smoke there and you can be ripped and you're not answering any questions, dog. You're just there to sell weed. Like you're going to be like this one, this one, this one will get you high. Right. Like, or, you know, even on the grower side, like people, and they just take dabs all day. Like they just dab out and they go and yeah, they fuck with the plants a little bit and then they go back to dabbing and they're just chilling and they're watching shit on their phones. And then you have the facilities you go in and they're like, here, put on this Tyvek suit and scrub down and this is how we do it. And everything's timed and nice and uniform and clean. So it's dope that yep. you finally found a spot that, you know, kind of gets you that opportunity. Yeah. And I mean, it, not to say that we don't have our own challenges at the facility I'm at, but uh, we have a, a method for dealing with almost every problem that can arise uh, that's already laid out. That, And if it's not laid out, we have individuals with a high enough intelligent quota to, to solve it almost yeah. instantly. Fuck yeah. um, whether that be like either like my boss's father, his mother, or myself or our other employee. I mean, it's really only just the five of us and it actually really only boils down to the three of us, like my boss, my myself and our other employee. Yeah, engineers are like, they're honestly a godsend in like the, the cannabis industry. If you have an engineer, like a good engineer on, on your team, uh, your place is, is gonna, and like they're the easiest, but they're also the hardest sometimes people to work with, right? Because they think differently than people, right? Oh, Engineers right. have engineer brain. Um, I have so many hard conversations <laughs> just to understand the terminology being right. used. But once I understand it, he can then use that terminology again. And I feel like that's a great thing with the culinary industry is I, I know so much French just mm-hmm. from cooking, but I can't apply it to anything else. Right. So similar to this, like I know probably a lot of stuff about growing and horticultural maintenance and irrigation strategies and stuff that I could probably talk about when it pertains to this, but it would be really hard for me to uh, apply it to, say, um, like some other style of engineering that also deals with hydraulics or environmental control or, you know, something like that where it's like I... I, I, I put all my effort into this. That's why I'm like, I, I have a lot of knowledge in this is because I'm like definitely trying to focus as much of my energy on this as possible. And it yeah. does definitely hinder me from learning and other aspects that I have also found to be problematic. So like I, I'm trying to become more holistic about it. I'm trying to like, now that I have some knowledge that I can build on that isn't necessarily mm-hmm. like the end all be all of knowledge, but it's definitely a, a foundation a good, yeah. that's very firm. I can start to branch out and be a little more holistic in my in my practices and try right. to learn 
uh, you know, not just necessarily when it comes to what I'm doing work-wise, but also just like bettering myself as a human being and yeah. as a husband and all these other things that I feel like are now, I, I put so much effort into it and it was tough. I, <laughs> I, if you have the perseverance, do it. But I don't want to like guide anybody in the wrong direction to be like, oh yeah, anybody can do this. It's not that easy. Like you need to be able to sacrifice time, income, uh, to, to learn that much that fast. And I, I yeah. was just truly blessed to have that opportunity. And mm -hmm. I, I feel for those who don't. And I, I, cause I've been there before. The culinary took me 15 years. This took me two and a half, three years. Right. And, and so I've, I've been on the other side of the coin as well. Yeah. And I think that that's like everyone's kind of experience or journey is it, it starts with like, you know, whether it's, 15 years or two years but it start it starts with very pointed very directed like i'm learning about this specific topic but as you get to this like i don't know next level of any learning you start branching off into all these other aspects that kind of funnel into your your area right so if you're a gardener at home and you start with growing weed eventually like somewhere in your journey you're gonna learn about just growing plants in general and that's gonna take you down <laughs> a rabbit hole of learning how to like fucking grow trees and grow grass and, and now you're gonna learn about the dirt and you're gonna learn about bacteria and you're gonna relearn chemistry because you need to learn how you know ionic exchanges happen and and it just takes you down all these rabbit holes where you like just start learning other shit now about other shit. Chemistry, yeah. biology, yeah. horticulture. You're just like learning everything oh, all bro, at once. Yeah, <laughs> like after you get past the just a little bit, like, okay, I know how to cure, I know how to grow, I know how to veg, flower, all that, IPM, okay, I'm good. And then poof, next level. Yep. Just well, and great. now I've been applying it to my vegetable gardening too. And yeah. it's right. just like taken off. I, I've applied it to our fruit trees that we have on the property. And they're just being so much more prolific this year than they were the past two years. And it's just because I'm applying just more educated strategies to my gardening in general isn't it and crazy how much better so great. it gets you with just plants like i have these two dying pear trees that were in like i think three gallon pots like when they were supposed to start and they're just in the corner of the yard and uh the it was my girl's brother right but she didn't do he didn't do anything with them he just left them in the little pots and like they were just gonna die and finally, I was like, so what's happening with these trees? And they're like, well, I mean, if you if you think you can save them. And I was like, well, I mean, fuck it, dude. I, I think I can. I think I can, right? So I like I go <laughs> and I like pick a spot in the yard and I clear it out. And, you know, I mix some dirt. I got some hot soil like kicking it. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to mend that in here. And I got some of the natural soil, mixed it up. And then I took some of the soil that was in the pot and shook it from the root so I could, you know, score some of the root mass and then, you know, got some great white and put it in there and, and watered it. Nice. And it's got a fucking pear on it, dude. Like it literally like in <laughs> two weeks, I just put it in there, started doing all this shit. And it's like, Oh yeah, cool. Sweet fruit. I've and I'm waiting. like, waiting. Yeah. I'm like, Oh yep. fuck dude. That's okay. Wait, I mean, wait till you <laughs> give it like three years since you gave it such a good start too. And if you give it like two more years of no, you know, you, you do like late season prunings once all the mm -hmm. the sugars have been pulled back into the root zone so that you don't stunt any of the growth or yeah, remove yeah, any yeah. of the energy from the plant. You just do little tiny like tips, tippings basically mm -hmm. for the next two years, dude, you're going to have the biggest fucking pear trees. That's going to be dope. I want to start grafting shit onto it. That's another rabbit oh, hole yeah. I'm going down right now is like learning how to graft. So I'm going to like graft some fucking apples onto that shit. It's going to be a crazy Dude, trip. graft a cannabis plant first. It's so easy. Yeah, we were just talking about that, bro. I'm like, dude, now I want to graft a weed plant. I want two weeds growing off the same plant. Like, that's yeah. what I want. I mean, think about how easy it is to, like, get a plant to knuckle up if you super crop it. Right. It, like, and that's all just, uh, like, what's it? I just learned that shit on accident callus, the first time, I think time, it's right? called callus tissue. It's the, like, the, the plant... Uh, stem cell tissue that basically can form any part of a new plant. So like when you see, like when you take a cutting and you see on the cutting or maybe oh, like any of the nodes that you, cells? Uh, not the meristem cells. Uh, so, because that's going to be up at the tip of the plant, but these ones are going to be uh, like, you take your clone, right? And so like, let's say this is your clone and you cut it right here. So at that cutting, once it, it calluses up, it has uh, that callus tissue in it that uh, is, it, 
it looks Can like kind of white, roots. almost like it's a pre-root. Like it hasn't rooted yet, but it's just kind of white and clean looking. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh yeah, this is about to root. Mm -hmm. So that that's like, I, I guess it's like stem cell tissue for plants and you can kind of turn that into anything. But it, it's also, that's what they use when they're doing tissue culture. Like they use this, this, uh, this callus tissue to form uh, like a new, uh, it's, it's kind of like a, like a embryo egg thing. Yeah. Tissue culture egg basically that you can then like plant and grow a new yeah. thing out of in like an agar sheet. Right. Yeah. So, um, and for you uh, listeners out there, yeah. you should totally look into TC. Like, go look at a video because it is crazy how they take like it's, just a clump of cells, basically, yeah. like just the smallest put little piece of a goo. plant, and they put it in some goop, and then they like the, do some stuff in a pressure cooker, and you know, put it under the light, and it's like sitting in the goop for a while, and then eventually, it's this little like a whole ass plant, dude. It's got leaves yeah. and roots and all the things, and they just you know manipulate it with hormones and those cells that he's talking about, right? Like it's. It's uh, we're we're at a science level and growing that is it's crazy. It feels like I'm in Star Trek sometimes. It's like, super cool. I, yeah, and and like to bring it back to what I was, I was saying at first. I almost I almost lost my train of thought there. But like, so I'm saying like if you super crop something, right? So where mm -hmm. a callus is up there and mm -hmm. it gets really fat, like I'm almost positive that that's that tissue is going to be very similar. So what if you cut into that tissue once it starts to callus up and that's where you graft to? Right. And I mean, even if it wasn't... Because it's going to like have so much hormone. Yeah, because like, it just, just got want... done healing that, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's where you could graft too. Right. So, like, so you can have your multi-phenotype your right. multi <laughs> yeah, <laughs> single off, mother, right? Like yeah, hella expressions the off of the, the same... strain Yeah, like your chimera plant. plant. <laughs> Dude, that would be so dope. And even if it didn't have those cells left over or remnant, like... If you're going to graft anywhere, why wouldn't you graft where there's just like this fucking chunky, nice, solid, smooth spot now because you just yeah. fucking super cropped it a week ago, you know, like, yeah. yeah. It'd be crazy to see like, like a super stretchy sativa grafted to like a super short, like stout plant. It's just got That'd this be... one like super long arm. <laughs> it, you'd almost have to like graft it after the stretch. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or just like Let top it stretch that up into one. The stretch top that one branch a bunch of times so it's actually like this side bush growing off of this other <laughs> oh my god i think i was listening to another podcast at one point and um uh kyle breeder from uh pure breeding hmm. was saying how he had this i think he called it a uh, corolla uh so some, some uh, sativa from i think it's the south pacific island somewhere uh he said he had to like it was like standing up right he had to turn the pot over because it grew up into the light and he had no more space. And then it turned and grew up into the light again. So he almost had to like turn that again forward. So it formed like a, a, like a weird an L, L on the ground yeah. and then went up and flowered. What the wow. fuck? <laughs> wow. Just because it, it, it stretched so much. How the one fuck did he water that sativas. thing? I, it was a cloth pot. Okay. Yeah, you just you just like water the top. <laughs> yeah, just water the cloth. I don't like, know. Just, he like, was just like, I just remember that from like a few years ago. Him dude, talking about that, I'm like, that's just some nuts. Honestly, some dude, crazy like, sativa. Don't, don't veg it that long again, ever again. You know, yeah. like in two week veg, and maybe. I just that's think it. that's like so indicative of equatorial plants, though. Like, if you're gonna grow an equatorial plant, like be somewhere near the equator, mm. right? <laughs> and then don't grow it in a tent. Grow it outdoors. Right. So Expect gonna... a tree, dog. Expect a tree. I've never grown a sativa like a straight sativa that was wasn't too tall for my space, no. right? Like, I've every time we try to grow one, it's like, yeah, I mean. I wish this was shorter, right? Like every time, like it's just crawling up in the lights. You got to raise the lights a bunch. Eventually you yep. can't raise the light anymore. So you're like fucking super cropping your shit every week and trying to tame it down. If you're scrogging it, you're like pulling yep. it super tight. And yeah, what a headache. We actually had a harvest at the last, uh, I think it was our last room that we harvested or two rooms ago. It was, uh, we, I, I got the plants in there way too late and that was on me. So they were just way too fucking big. Mm -hmm. But, um, they they grew up into the light like four times and I, I I had to raise the lights. Luckily we have the the lights on like a truss system where I can raise all of them at once. Nice. But uh, it, it can only go so far in an eight foot room. So I I got them up there all the way to the ceiling and just super cropped the plants down. And we had our like largest harvest since I've been there. Like we were pulling 
like a little over three a light on some of the strains. Wow. Fuck and that yeah, was, dude. that was pretty dope. That uh, is hella dope. Yeah. I'm, I'm stoked on it. Yeah. That's super cropping, dude. It, it ends up working out. Like when, you know, most growers, newbie growers, you do that on accident your first time, right? Like you're messing with the plant and then you snap it and you're like, oh no, I'm sorry, please don't die. And you're like yeah. trying to lift it back up and then it fucking actually kicks ass. It's yeah. like, oh yeah, nice and strong. In a couple now. hours, it's yeah. like you and back up to the light. Yeah, it's like, like, oh, oh no, shit. I'm good. Okay, yeah, you I'm like straight. that? Yeah. <laughs> no, the, the plant I actually got going right now, it's a Max Slurry in my uh, in my tent. It's, uh, I, it's super cropped. I, I just was like, I'm not going to top it. I want all that. I need all that flower sight. So I, uh, I like super cropped it and it, it knuckled up like the, the main stem was actually about as big as my finger and it knuckled up. Like it's almost like this wide now Damn, across yeah. the knuckle. Uh, but it's like super flat. It almost like fasciated out and then like almost came back in. It's pretty interesting. So Damn. Fuck yeah, dude, I'm going to go check yeah, that out when you girthy. post some pictures. So that's what I was gonna ask you is is that the only thing growing in your in your tents right now is that max slurry or you got a couple other things cooking? Uh, so I got the max slurry going right now. Um, that's the the one I got that in a thirty gallon um, grassroots living soil pot. Okay. Uh, so the those so are the ones with that. the yeah, yeah, plastic yeah. walls, but uh, so it's a fabric pot, but they're lined with like a BPA free food grade plastic all the way down to the bottom six inches, and then the six inches are open just like a normal fabric pot. Uh, so you get the root breathing and root pruning down low, but you get good water retention in most of the pots. So you don't uh, have like huge humidity spikes at night from fabric pot transpiration, um, which is just mm. like has always been a bane of my existence within a tent if I'm using a fabric pot, uh, especially with like cocoa or, or hydroponics, uh, like high frequency fertigation or, or anything like that. So I, I found that this was just really manageable and it keeps my humidity up where i don't need to really run a humidifier past uh like maybe the the first week of flower i, I actually kind of cut it off like a week ago before i even flipped and i just flipped it like two days ago nice. so it, it's been like holding steady at like 60 throughout the, the day and night so i'm i'm happy with that hmm. um okay, but yeah. then that's that's the only thing i have in the four by eight right now because uh that's just uh, like sector two, I guess, if we're reading it like a book. Uh, so sector one is um, going to be, um, I have a, uh, a four by four drain tray with a four by four grassroots uh, living soil fabric pot. That, and I am making up my own living soil for that. Uh, it's kind of based on like the Clackamas Coot recipe mm -hmm. with a few tweaks uh, kind of following like some of the build a soil stuff and then just a, uh, like a few different other things online and from what I've picked up from other yeah. people and what I've been trying to learn. So, and then also to fit within budget, um, like I, I can't go and buy uh, half uh, a yard of worm castings. That's so unfeasible. Right. It's, right. Or like, a, I think it's like a third of a yard of worm castings, but it comes out to something crazy like uh, seven or nine cubic feet of worm castings, which it's, it'll run you like 500 fuck. bucks yeah that's a lot of fucking worm yeah. casting that's like so i just like got compost like pretty like pretty decent compost and then i made my own worm castings i like foresought this and like made worm castings just for this that were have just been fed uh like specifically nutrients that i'm putting in there as well as cannabis leaves and cannabis stems and like barley and and all the stuff that i've read that will really help like boost their numbers, but really kind of also kind of boost the, the enzyme and microbial life specific to cannabis. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's all cooking right now. I got that out uh, under a tarp. I gotta, I haven't mixed the actual nutrients in yet because I don't want the microbial life to go too crazy yet. I'm mm -hmm. kind of trying to hope that it cysts up a little bit for now um, because I need to, it, it's getting too hot outside. So I don't have enough time to let it properly like uh, cook uh, out, outside and I don't have an indoor space to let it cook so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that sit for a couple more days just to kind of let all the microbes find their place and then then cyst up and then I'm going to mix it and then I'm going to let it cook for like a month inside of the tent uh, and just like mix it and bring it directly into the tent. Nice. Probably yeah. spray it down, put a cover crop on it and, um, just yeah. let it kind of do its thing. 
Nice. Do you have live worms in that in in your soil in your big ass uh, pot? I, I imagine, right? Yeah, in the thirty gallon, I I have worms in it. Nice. Um, and then they all they're pretty active in there. They they go through. I, I feed them pretty regularly. Just with uh, I do like a malted barley meal, uh, kelp meal, um, and that's that just kind of like feeds the microbes at the top surface. So the the barley will throw down a bunch of enzymes and get the mycelial action really going. Mm -hmm. uh, and that'll start to just break down the kelp really fast. And then it'll kind of promote all the microbial life to come up. Cause I have like a nice little top layer of rice holes and uh, white clover. So it keeps like a nice little humid environment there. So it should break it down pretty damn quick. And then the worms will just shoot up to the top and take all the, uh, the juices and stuff from the the dead Fuck microbes yeah. and stuff and nice. give that right back to the soil do you yeah. seek out like quality like you're talking like the malted barley meal do you like look for quality stuff or do you find something on the store shelf and just use that um a little bit of column a a little bit of column b just so for budget wise it's it's budget based i i mean in in the end i feel like one thing to remember is like all the nutrients are going to be the same when the plant uptakes them. Right. Uh, the the big differences are going to be like what's what you're left with, uh, trace wise afterwards. Maybe what what those products might have been treated with in, in their lifetime, mm -hmm. if they were sprayed with some sort of pesticide like glyphosate or or like like Roundup or, or just other things that are going to. They they aren't necessarily it's not necessarily known what the whole mm -hmm. picture is in terms of human health with mm -hmm. then using those for other things afterwards right um so i try to avoid things that i can uh but if it's extremely cost prohibitive i'll i'll just look for something maybe local or something that is uh the best option that other people use um but it it, it it does become cost prohibitive, like malted barley. I, I picked up a 50 pound bag of just malted barley. Like and I, I now use like an old coffee mill to grind it up for myself because it's just super cost effective for yeah. what I, my application rates. And that thing will now last me like five years. Right. Um, but it's, it's not like a, a non GMO or a organic, uh, but it is, what like all the breweries around here use for the beer that I drink all the time. So you're hoping it's some type of good, right? Like, like if they're what, all using what, it. It's got to be at least okay. I mean, if I'm drinking it and it's only been through one fermentation process and now I'm putting it in soil where li it, it's going to go through a plethora of fermentation and devouring and yeah, process. just like reconfiguration yeah. processes until it eventually gets into my smoke i don't Probably know gonna be okay i'm yeah. I'm also smoking it right so like how concerned am i with mm -hmm. like overall health i don't know like it, it's come up lately in my thought process like i smoke a lot but i'm also concerned about what i spray on the plants and stuff like i don't spray chemicals on them like yeah. this last run that i did i i didn't spray a thing on it and i'm pretty proud of that Fuck yeah. but uh, this one I'm, I'm, I'm using like foliar sprays and stuff and, and adding like silica and humates, uh, to the, the foliar spray to hopefully kind of boost the plant's overall immune system. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm not trying to really add extreme deterrents. Like I've, I've always used wettable sulfur in the past and I think I might try and spray it once, but I, I think after that I'm going to hold off on, on the rest of the grow and just see how it goes. I've always also found when I spray sulfur, I get like such better terpene profile expression. Fuck no. yeah, dude. And I like that you mentioned like it's important, like going back, like you don't know what the barley has been sprayed with. And I think that's, you know, important for a lot of people who try to compost at home too, is like, keep in mind that if you're going to use that compost to grow food or grow something you're going to consume in any kind of way, smoke it, whatever, like, it has to start off at least okay, right? Like, you don't yeah. want to put a bunch of stuff that's been sprayed with pesticides and Roundup, or, like, if you're using yard clippings, like, what would you put in your yard, right? Like, is it a bunch of miracle grow shit? And, again, Roundup and other weed and feed, and then you're taking that and you're putting it in your compost pile and then taking that, putting in your garden, and then eating the stuff that grows from it? Like, yeah, 
totally glad that you said that, dude. That's definitely something people should be aware of. And when you're talking about a plant that is also used as a medicine and, you know, should have some type of, I guess, uh, reverence when it comes to thinking about, okay, I'm going to use this and not only am I going to get high, but I'm, you know, it's treating these ailments, right? So I think, you know, it's important to treat it that way and keep it as clean as possible. And I know that me and Garrett try to do that. Like we're all about the organics and keeping it clean. And I, that's why we jive well, right? Like that's why we want to do the project together because, yep. you know, we, we kind of, we subscribe to the same kind of methodologies and, and we're kind of circled to the same idea and the same thought processes, but from different states away, right? And on, on our own journeys. So fuck yeah. And I feel like one of the big things there is that we're always trying to learn. We're, we're not here to find a specific way of doing something and then say, this is the way to do it. Uh, I don't need to learn anything else. Right. I'm, I'm good. Right. Um, that's not a great way to go about life in any way. So where I'm, I'm totally all about the, the constant learning and the application of knowledge. Right. And I was just, yeah, you know, we were just talking about that before the show too. Like the more I know about this plant and plants in general, the more I, fe I feel stupid, the more I feel like I don't know. I'm like, Oh fuck dude. Like I thought I knew a lot, but now I feel like a fucking idiot. <laughs> Yeah. That's okay. Constant like, pursuit oh, of yeah, knowledge. Yeah, it's always a pursuit of knowledge. Now I'm like, oh, okay, now there's these 11 new things I have to learn about where it's like before it felt like only one thing, right? And that's, <laughs> I think a lot of things when you're gardening is like you're, you're, you're constantly humbled by the things that you, <laughs> you don't know and the questions that arise and, you know, the, the problems that come up, right? Like, and it's more about problem solving and responding and learning and, and being humble and, and asking questions than it is like, nope, this is the way, and I got it, and kind of growing with that kind of ego, pride mindset. Yep. But also never, like, don't don't forget to take pride and, and excitement in your wins. And when you do something that is awesome, recognize it and, yeah. and make sure that you feel good about yourself. Because I know personally I don't do that enough, and it's always a journey to try and make sure you feel, uh, like, self-recognition uh, almost. Yeah. Yeah for sure nick what's what's your like end goal with cannabis right like you got out of culinary and kind of completely changed up your life and now you're kind of in it right and so what is your end goal i know we you know would like to have our own grows and i feel like everybody who kind of is enveloped in the industry or like this um shares that but is that is that what you want do you want to kind of like envision one day owning your own running your own show uh, definitely owning and running my own show, but not necessarily in the sense of like owning a commercial grow right. or a commercial grow space. Um, I, I'm definitely, I have found that this has been such a, a medicinal plant and the aspects of it are so unique uh, cultivar to cultivar that I have always just been drawn to the idea of different flavors and different strains and so I, I do a little breeding on the side and I, I like to kind of dabble with new flavors that I can try and find and, and see what other people are creating and, and search through it so um, you asked me like what I'm growing and earlier and uh, I was also going to add in I, I'm also like pheno hunting through like 30 different seeds right now and so like anytime I pheno hunt I'll pop like 30 to 50 different seeds and and just find one or two maybe um like i i actually don't have any keepers from any pheno hunts yet and i've probably popped um uh, five to 750 seeds so far it's hard to say just because i like i'll pop a bunch and then like i'll even chop them early if they're like not necessarily the best looking thing or it, it, like you know there's like solo yeah. cup size right like yeah or I, I use like four inch by four inch nursery pots Hmm. Um, just uh, to keep this the square aspect, so I can fit more in a in a cubic foot area, because right. uh, then I can use like the the twelve inch trays, and I can fit four of them wide, and I can fit uh, two of them uh, lengthwise. So I I have like I think I can do like eighteen times eight if I wanted to to actually pheno hunt that many and and just flower them at four inches, but. That's what also the kind of the purpose of the four by four bed is going to be is I'm just going to throw it, it'll always be in flower and I'm just going to throw 
clone size plants in there um, mm -hmm. and see how they do with my nutrient regimen. Cause I'll, I'll probably like grow some tried and trues in there at first to get it dialed in. And then once it's like cycling nutrients, well, I'm not, I'm not going to be too worried about flowering really small plants and then just like basically returning all of it, except for the top couple nugs just to smoke and test. And I'll take a clone or two off of it and, and veg or no, it'll already be, I'll have the seed. This will be a clone. So I just need to take like that much top nug off of it just to see if it's worth, uh, the pheno and then i'll i'll keep it yeah. or chop it and that's kind throw of like cool. even the mother into it are yeah. you searching for flavor when you do that is that kind of what you're after a, a flavor and effect um so like i i need my cannabis to be heavily narcotic but also so it needs to like make me calm down so that i'm not overthinking things but also have a pain relief effect uh just from like years of, of kitchen abuse on my body and then just I, I grew up with a brother that was a year younger than me so we were rough as hell on each other and i beat myself up just way too much from a young age so i'm i just have I already have like creaks and uh you know yeah. sore got sore the, things got the old man creaks oh yeah yeah so i just i use it just for for like pain and and mental relief so it, it needs to be narcotic it is one of the big things for me, like when people say, oh man, that, that's a really narcotic strain or that's a heavy strain. That's what I'm always looking for. So I'm, I'm, I've already got one, uh, cross in the works right now. And, uh, I'll, I'll we'll talk about more of that at some point in the near future, yeah. but I won't release that information quite yet. Cause I'm, secret. I'm still finishing up like the first, uh, round of F2 seed making. So I need to like finish that and pheno hunt it so I can find some keepers and make some crosses before anybody knows or is, might be interested in it. Yeah, um, yeah. And then from there, I'm also just like always pheno hunting stuff to then eventually cross into this line uh, as out crosses. Basically, uh, if I find like just some fire keepers that people are going to want to see like a cross of that into like the works that I'm making, like I just want to have one main line, maybe a few. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that'll that'll that be other shit. Yeah, fuck yeah. That, that's what I eventually want to do. Get, nice, get some, dude. Get into either breeding or just like uh, uh, like flavor curating or, or like medicinally uh, curating. Um, I just the I heard there's for a people. term for that now. It's like a gangier that they're like trying to start. A <laughs> no, 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 no. no <laughs> I don't want to be associated to... with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm no, just that, saying they're trying to people push that can this. Like try and they're like, I can smoke that flower and tell you what it is. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I, like, you can tell me whatever the fuck you think it is. And if it's that, it's that. But if it if it works, does it work for you medicinally? And if so, yeah, that's what I'm interested in. So I like I feel like it's more of like a tastemaker than a ganjier where I, I want to find stuff that works really well for me because I I know that the stuff that works well for me works well for my wife, works well for my dad, well, it works well for my coworker. Uh, if I tell my boss that it's extremely narcotic, it works well in the situations he needs a narcotic. Like I, I know that it works this way for a lot of different endocannabinoid systems. So I'm, nice. that's kind of where my goal is, is to, to get something there that people can be reliably, uh, or they can reliably use to, to get that sort of narcotic experience where yeah. it helps them relax at the end of the day or relieve pain or, uh, but also like stay alert enough to where they can have a conversation and they're not just going to melt into the couch, uh, you know, not right. just like fall asleep, but, but like really help, help with every, every other aspect except for yeah. getting you to sleep and then just smoke a little more and then go to sleep. And that's kind of where, yeah, to. I think your personality, about dosing. I think your personality type fits the breeder. Well, I think just getting to know you a little bit, I just feel like you can excel really well at breeding. I feel yeah. like you're pretty anal retentive about your stuff and uh, like you're fairly particular. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I don't know. I feel like that's a really good path for you to go down and start yeah. and that you're already doing it. So I don't need to tell you this, but like, I just, <laughs> I, I'm just like, damn dude, like that, there will be success there. That suits right? you. Yeah. Yeah. So. That, like the amount of like passion that you have into even looking for these strains, right? Like, you know, you're taking, as I much just have to as learn you how to do. market. Oh, dude. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're getting that's there, my right? problem. We got this. We got this podcast. Yeah, that's we what got, I'm doing here, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. You're, you're doing. My name you're practicing there, right? already, man. Yeah. And we're gonna do the video series, and then you you be a champion. 
Fuck yeah. There we go. And you, if you ever need some testers, you know, holler at your boys. <laughs> We're only a state away. Yeah. That's right. No, I, I mean, I'll definitely, I want to have <laughs> testers, but I also, I don't want to do it like other tester programs where they're just like, here, take some seeds. Like, I, I, I tried that at, at one point and, like, just with one of the crosses, I was like, ah, let's see if, what people do with this. And, and I got, like, one response from someone or two responses from some local people that I, I respected. Um, but then I got like a couple from other people and the way that they responded was just so odd and off putting that mm. I, I was like, I don't know if you're a, a, like a fed trying to get me to do something illegal. Cause like one of them was like, Oh yeah, I'd love to help you out with that. And I'm like, awesome. Like I, I see that you have a small grow and it, it was like, you know, they had like 10 pictures on their profile of just like one little grow and it was like kind of blurry photos so i was mm -hmm. like oh whatever they're just like camera they just phone did this, right yeah you know like maybe they just maybe they like have a, an ailment or somewhere they they can't hold steady or like maybe maybe they just like really don't give a fuck and they're just doing this to try and get free seeds or something or or trying to like enter the giveaways and stuff or see what other people are doing and, they, and they're not really into like they're, what they're doing they just want to see what other people are doing so mm -hmm. i didn't want to judge it but but then like after a few conversations i like got an address and it's like a like a it didn't it wasn't like a weird address but it, it struck me like where it was i was like oh that's like why are you asking okay like cool like um and so i i was about to like send it and i read the message the next day and he's like hey do you think you could send me some of that flour from your last harvest too and i was like Oh, bro, no. <laughs> yeah, uh, no so happen. I like, I like deleted the whole conversation, blocked the person. I was like, uh, uh. <laughs> you fuck and that. I'm so, if you're yeah. out there and you listen to this, and you were genuinely like, man, I was, I was really hopeful for those seeds. Then I was like, I have to say, don't ask for. Yo, just switch the strategy. Yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't be coming at it like that. Like, uh, no, I can't. I'm not gonna send over state lines like right. cannabis. Like seeds are less than 0.3 yeah. percent THC. I'm not sending them internationally. I'm, I'm not going to do anything yeah. shady with them. It's like, we're not, gonna yeah, be, we're not, they're going to be washed and, and ready. There's not going to be anything on them. Not sending weed to strangers, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, and, it's and like, then mm, sending no, weed. Mr. Officer. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what the? Yeah. Hell? Like, that just didn't. No. I'm didn't glad you trusted right. your gut there, dude. That just sounds fishy, too. <laughs> like, hey, you want to also send me some weed? And then, like, they're like waiting by the thing. Like, yeah, nah. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm not about that. Yeah. So what what is in your joint right there? You've been smoking on throughout. Oh, this is uh, black cherry garlic. Uh, Relentless genetics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. We got a, a the stuff you a, you grew or from the facility you work at or the grow that you work uh, at. Well, I got the cut from. Uh, well, I allegedly acquired the cut from a friend who acquired it from the breeder. Um, okay. So, uh, but it's it's uh, really 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 good. It's <laughs> very narcotic just like i like but it also it tastes when i first light the joint it kind of tastes like old uh like boylan's black cherry soda Ooh. um like the stuff from the glass bottle mm -hmm. um with the white label that that stuff's fire so i always used to love that shit and so it actually like when it was growing too it had this effervescent smell to it um and i can't really explain why but it like it smelled like if you had uh, like fresh soda water out of a soda machine and you kind of smell the top of it, how it's kind of that carbonated smell. Mm -hmm. It kind of had that with cherry undertones. So it smelled like cherry soda the whole time. It was nice. pretty cool. Nice. As bold of you to smoke something with a narcotic effect and come onto a podcast to talk to yeah. us. Well, like I said, it, it helps me calm my mind. <laughs> That's good, I, yeah. Otherwise, I, I might it. not be able to stay focused. I would probably forget things or, or get lost uh, oh, man. in thought elsewhere. Yeah, oh, jo dude. Josh and I smoke random shit here, here and there. And sometimes they just put me oh, into a bro. different spot. Man. Yeah, like, no, I, like, we'll both be stuck. And it's like, okay, note for <laughs> next time. Never okay. smoke that on the show because that no, was like <laughs> too crazy. <laughs> so like I, the one, something like that for me was like, I tried golden goat, uh, like a year ago and that's, oh my God, it was just so sativa forward. Uh, like in terms of if what someone would like think of as traditional sativa and it just had me like, Oh my God, like what's going on? I'm so excited about everything. And I, but it was like, I, I was so distractible. Mm -hmm. 
man <laughs> one like that we had like ethiopian that we were smoking and i think we did a dab and it was like oh man maybe maybe fatso or something like that it was just something heavy on heavy and after i took the dab i was like that was a mistake <laughs> I was like, I am tired now, and I'm trying really hard not to yawn into this microphone or, like, on camera, but it's it's getting harder and harder, and I'm thinking about shit that is not even what we're talking about, right? And I'm like, oh, God, hold it together for, like, ten more minutes. You got oh, this, man. Josh. <laughs> what were you guys smoking there? Uh, the ice pie. It's a... Uh, is it a Fino, or is it just something we just kind of No, it was sometimes? a clone we got from... I'm forgetting Somebody. his name. Tiki Madman. Oh, Tiki Madman. Another okay. Tiki. So another we, we tiki just went through cross. a whole, like, yeah. we bought a bunch of, we bought it like three or four different types of clones from Tiki. We we're got running a bunch a of, clone, lot of uh, seeds and shit. So tiki just running. from that batch, we we're trying to, we we're trying to yeah. work it out. This is our like second or third time running it. And yeah. we usually get, give it three or four chances before we either cut it or keep it. Did you guys get seeds from him or, or, uh, that was clones? a clone. That was a clone. Oh, yeah? Of fucking, yeah. That was, um, my bosses that was for for the from the facility so that was like a 500 hundred dollar clone yikes yikes um, yeah. I, I i have uh a couple of clones right now that are um let's see what's it uh red velvet Ooh. and uh e85 from uh grandiflora mm. genetics and uh yeah they cost more than i care to share <laughs> yeah dude some of those clones are like I've seen one for like 10k. Yeah, there's there's one oh. from like Bee Leaf right now that's like his Chimera two that's like ten thousand dollars and it's Dude, like dog bro. can you for can a you cutting, really... like that's the breeder that I want to be right like I don't even sell seeds I just sell you clippings of my one mom that I'm keeping forever and it, it each clipping is ten thousand. Yeah, I mean like the whole reason why I was like oh man breeding is definitely the way to go because seeds I'm looking at like seeds at like right off the get when I'm trying to start growing. I'm like, why would I buy? Because I'm over here like thinking like tomato seeds and stuff. I, I'm not too aware of like the different phenotypes and stuff that can come from a pack at this point. I just hadn't really looked that up yet. It wasn't part of my, my reality to this world yet. Mm -hmm. So I, I was like looking into packs and it's like 10 seeds for like two, 300 bucks. I'm like, these are $30 seeds. Cl clones clones are thirty dollars what the f right why would i buy 10 seeds uh and so i just like never even popped a seed probably for like a year and a half wow well because yeah, you're mean, in, in oregon you so you go can buy go to a clone. the dispensary yeah. and yeah you got yeah. clones in the dispensary so i, mean, I had a buddy that you... gone to oregon just no we didn't so i had a i had no <laughs> allegedly yeah. so i like i had a buddy that actually got me I've never been legit to the legit like runs crew runs cut as my first clone that I ever grew. Wow, um, that's fucking dope. Just that's a dope. Lucked first out. Clone. Met the guy at the grow shop. We kind of hit it off, and we just had been talking and stuff. And he's like, "Well, I got clones. If you ever need one." I was like, "Well, I have to set up my first grow first. So I was like setting it up, set up like this weird little ebb and flow system that was all built out of like two by fours and like a bucket lid and you know just like what the shit I could find around the house and put together, like using mylar blankets and moving, moving blankets to block out light and stuff. So, uh, but I grew this fucking runs in there. And man, I was like so impressed with it. Cause obviously it's like a pretty elite genetic for the time. And it was like what everyone was craving. So I was yeah. like, holy shit. I seen this go for hell of money at the dispensary <laughs> near me. Like, and this stuff looks just as good. Like little do I know that it's like all the dispensary weed, that I've been seeing is garbage. Right. Uh, so <laughs> it's a, yeah, it was like, like kind I'm of bittersweet great. now looking back on it to be like, man, I, I grew pretty, pretty average mids for my first <laughs> for grow. Like for your weed. first grow to actually <laughs> produce something smokable and like on a level where you could find it at a dispensary, dude, like that's, that's pretty good. That's good beginner's luck. Like I didn't produce smokable weed for three more grows at yeah. home. That's okay, so, like, man. If, That's all if part everyone of the process. else wants to also think like you, like you can fail a whole bunch before oh, you get good. bro. I think everyone, bro. you know, does. generally does, unless they have somebody who's like really right by their side, checking all their balances. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, unless you're Padawan to do somebody, like you're gonna fuck up. You're yeah. gonna fuck up hard. Yeah. 
Well, Mr. Wolf, Nick, uh, it was great talking to you, man. Uh, yeah. Is there anything that you would like to tell the people, our audience, or anything uh, before we go? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. I'm uh, Mr. Wolf Grows, uh, Wolf with an E, W-O-L-F-E. Uh, and uh, also my genetics company that I am working on is Anthos underscore genetics. Uh, Anthos is Greek for flowers. So it's just flowers genetics. Um, nice. But yeah. Anthos sounds dope. Anthos does <laughs> sound dope. Fuck yeah. You need some stickers, my friend. I want an Anthos uh, sticker. I got to figure that out. Yeah, fuck yeah. We got we we got a guy. We yeah. can send it over yeah. your oh, way. Yeah. They're pretty cheap. Yeah. Well, appreciate <laughs> you, dude. Yeah, and, thank uh, you for thank coming you on. Thank you guys for listening. Look we, out for the Grower's Dilemma yeah. featuring our homeboy here, yeah. Mr. Wolf. And Nick. now that you know who he is, you actually pick up some of that knowledge and be like, wow, yeah, this man knows <laughs> a lot. It's a good time. Yeah. But uh, we will see you guys next week. We appreciate you. Love you. Yeah, and love you. Bye. Peace. Peace.